Well, not too hot and not too cool. We got that pretty steady consumer price index inflation print this morning. The rate for all items rising 3.7 percent in September. This follows a report from wholesale producers which showed that inflation in that sector remains sticky. We did see core inflation, which includes food and energy, cool slightly to 4.1 percent. That prompted President Joe Biden to say in a statement that this is Bidenomics in action. We have Jared Bernstein, the chair of the U.S. Council of Economic Advisors, joining us today. Jared, always good to talk to you. It feels like a bit of good and bad, right, in the inflation print. We we're talking about core inflation cooling down here. But we saw super core inflation. This is services excluding housing and energy, something that Fed specifically increasingly is looking at. Um, that monthly gain was the fastest we've seen in a year. What do you think has made that so sticky? Well, I think you have to be careful in any given month. I mean, there was a, a actual a hotel lodging spike, a big swing there uh, that uh, looked kind of anomalous. I think that the general trend here is worth uh, beginning with, and that's the idea that inflation, headline inflation, the CPI is down 60% off its peak. Uh, remember, uh, if we were talking in June of uh, last year, we'd be talking about a number that was uh, north of 9%. So 3.7 uh, is 60% uh, down from that. And of course, core inflation fell to its uh, lowest level in more than two years, the year over year rate. Uh, wages are actually higher in real terms than they were a year ago. And then prices for uh, some of the core goods like used cars and furniture uh, fell for the fourth month in a row. You know, eggs is a very salient price in this economy, ticked up a touch in September, but they're down 57 percent. So that's deflation off of their peak. So I think if you look at the longer term trends, you can definitely see uh, the kind of easing in the data that uh, is something we're very much uh, uh, pulling for. Energy is certainly a big contributor to inflation in the last month, although we did see a pullback in uh, oil prices prior to the fighting between Israel and Hamas breaking out there. Um, what's your assessment right now from the White House in terms of how the current conflict that's playing out right now is likely to contribute to a spike in energy prices? If this doesn't unravel beyond Israel and Hamas, is the expectation that prices could remain pretty steady? Uh well, this is a very much a global price, as as you know. And 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 prior to uh, uh, prior to the uh, events uh, beginning last weekend, uh, horrific events, um, uh, obviously, uh, we had uh, oil coming down, and in fact, that's kind of stuck since then. And so, the gas price, as of this morning, uh, the retail gas price was uh, uh, three dollars and sixty five cents a gallon. Okay, so that's actually lower than uh, was reflected in today's CPI report. And it's a dollar thirty-seven below its peak of of last summer. So that's real savings per gallon. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, you know, just a, a few weeks ago, we were looking at gas prices that were north of of three eighty. So that's been that's been a nice movement. Now um, we will, of course, watch the impact uh, of uh, global events, whether it's uh, Ukraine or or now Israel uh, on on, uh, on on global oil markets. Uh, but the, the the price thus far has not been uh, hugely affected. Uh, aside from that, we, we've also seen sort of those prices remain elevated because of the production cuts coming through from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. As the White House sees it, do those extension of the cuts, does, does the demand justify that? Well, I think that the uh, production cuts, uh, of course, are very much priced into the numbers that we were just talking about. And so um, demand and supply uh, are moving around in ways that I think are uh, even harder than usual to predict where oil markets are settling. Um, and again, you know, geopolitical headwinds of the type we just talked about. I think we just have to look at the price, look at the forward curves uh, in the futures markets. And there we see uh, a story that when you get to the pump, which is the end of the line that matters so much when we're talking about consumer prices, has been um, uh, favorable in terms of its trend. So we have a gas price that's uh, 365 this morning. Uh, last month, the average was north of 380. Uh, so that's a movement in the right direction. We'll just have to keep watching how those, uh, how those uh, factors all equilibrate in coming weeks.
Uh, let's talk about where yields have been moving, obviously off of the highs that we saw recently, but I'm looking at the 10-year right now at 4.6%, the 30-year yield below that 5% level at 4.7%. Obviously, the higher yields mean higher costs. The government needs to spend uh, paying back its debt. As we talk about the budget deficit and spending certainly in focus over in D.C., how does this shift that we have seen in yield how does it shift the administration's calculation uh, in terms of budget priorities? Well, the budget priority, getting on a sustainable fiscal path, is something that uh, we've judged to be an important part of our agenda ever since we got here, regardless of the bips and bops and rates. Um, I'll say a bit more about that in a second because it's a, a, a timely question. But I think in the context of our discussion today, which has really been about headwinds and tailwinds, <clears throat> We should remember that one of the reasons for higher for longer is because growth has surprised to the upside. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, you and your colleagues have talked a lot about uh, different types of landings and lots of market folk for predicting recessions. And they've they've certainly uh, you know turned that pencil around and erased uh, those forecasts. And so the, the, the stronger growth that we've seen, uh, I'm sure you've seen estimates for Q3 GDP. We've had an unemployment rate that's been below, been below 4% for 20 months in a row. We just had a, a gangbuster job. Now, this is, it. When, when President Biden and I talk about the economy, uh, what he wants to know are how, how are middle-class workers doing? What are their job options like? What are their real wages doing? Which, you know, as we learned this morning, real wages are up over the past year. And that's a trend that's been persistent for the past few months. And we have to build on that. I'm not suggesting our work is done by a long shot. We need to see the labor market maintaining its tightness while prices continue to ease so we can maintain those trends. But it's that kind of strength, particularly the American consumer who's benefited from those dynamics, keeping this economy going. And yes, that's created some upward pressure on rates. Now, when you get to the budget, um, we have a plan that reduces the deficit by 2.5 trillion over 10 years. We're gonna continue to fight for that. And uh, I would say the current uh, dynamics that you described make that fight even more urgent. Uh, finally, uh, you know, over in the House, uh, we've got Steve Scalise being nominated to be the next House Speaker. Uh, certainly that vote far from done, but that does suggest uh, more of a shift to the right, if you will, if you consider from where Kevin McCarthy was in terms of policy. Um, how does that change the calculus for the White House in terms yeah. of the policy it believes it can push through in this Congress? Oh, look, the White House is a, a fairly complex operation with lots of people working on lots of different things. Of course, my uh, lane is the economy. And let me say this about, about your question. I'm not going to get into the politics and who's going to prevail and what, uh, you know, what this says about the party or whatever. Here's the way I look at this. Um, you and I have been talking about the economy. We've been talking about prices. We've been talking about gas prices. If you're not helping to push back on higher prices the way we are through lower prices for prescription drugs, lower prices for clean energy, lower prices for insulin, pushing back on junk fees. If you're not helping to maintain the tight labor market that we've seen, um, if you're not helping to do work on behalf of the American middle class and instead are engaged in you know, a set of fights that take you away from that, and I'm not even getting into the geopolitical exigencies that are, of course, so uh, so so present right now, um, then I think you need to figure out how to uh, uh, correct that course. So you know if you're not if you're not willing if you're not out of the cart helping to push it forward, uh, that's where you need to figure out how to get. I mean these folks are are sent here uh, to Washington to do the work of the American people. It's certainly what President Biden instructs his team to do every day, and that's what we're trying to do. And we've seen some progress on inflation. We've seen some progress on the job market. We've certainly seen good progress on overall growth. Um, and so that's that's where, you know, at least for the econ team, that's where our heads are in that space. Uh, finally, Jared, you know, I've heard you point to the progress that you have seen in the economic picture. And yet every poll we look at still points to the president uh, mm -hmm. struggling with voters in terms of the perception of his handling of the economy. I've seen the White House double down on Bidenomics over the last several months. Why are you so convinced that that's a winning strategy when, when the perception, regardless of the data, is not good right now in terms of the president and the economy? Well, I probably would correct the, uh, the, the, the uh, conclusion about the perception in the following way. 
If you ask people about the internal components of Bidenomics, investing in manufacturing, investing in clean energy, um, and, and not just uh, the, IR, the Inflation Reduction Act, but also the Infrastructure Act and the CHIPS Act, standing up domestic semi, uh, semiconductor production here, standing up the domestic production of EVs and the whole supply chain therein, uh, the co cost reductions I talked about a second ago, ask them about insulin, ask them about clean water, getting you know, replacing lead pipes, you're gonna get poll numbers that are north of 80%. So one thing to do is um, get down and, and, and you know roll up your sleeves and ask people um, what Bidenomics uh, components are doing for their, their lives to get a very different result. But that doesn't mean I discount the polls that you mentioned. They're real, they're saying something, no question. And I think there you have to recognize that the American people have been through a lot. Um, the geopolitical uh, upheaval that we've been talking about, and I'm not just talking about Israel, but of course Ukraine, uh, before that uh, pandemic of the likes we haven't seen for 100 years, a 40 year inflation from which we're down 60%, supply chain upheaval, conflict with uh, you know, our, 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 uh, our dealings with, uh, with uh, uh, countries in Asia. So look, um, people have been through a lot. And what we need to do is to maintain a strong labor market, uh, and I think you see that in the data, continue to uh, do everything we can to put downward pressure on prices and uh, keep, this, um, keep this positive expansion going. And that uh, enables enough time for people to reset their expectations around prices, which we already see happening as their real incomes catch up. And I think that's the key. So look, time has to pass. Um, I'm not saying time heals all, but time backed by favorable economic trends, uh, I think uh, will eventually improve some of those sentiments given what, what folks have been through. And then, as I said, if you actually ask people about our specific policies, they're, they're a lot more favorable than the broad uh, polls would suggest. Jared Bernstein, the chair of the U.S. Council of Economic Advisors. Always good to have you on. Appreciate the time today. Great talking. Bye-bye.